Hi, welcome to another video. So, I found a really cool thing, and I wanted to talk about this because I've been using it a lot. It makes sense, and I also want to talk about one more thing through the topic of this tool. This one is called Code Rabbit. This has been existing for a while, and it has been especially useful for things like code review in GitHub. What Code Rabbit used to do is that it was basically a GitHub bot that used AI to review pull requests and gave you remarks if you did something wrong, or if there was some visible error, or some security issue, or anything like that. It is actually really great at that. But now, they have made a VS Code extension that does the same thing, but within your editor, and it's fully free to use. I found it really interesting, so I'm going to tell you about it today. Now, what this extension does is simple, but really useful stuff. It basically allows you to review your code before you ship, and all this is done directly in the IDE. So, you can basically code or make your AI coder code in a separate branch, and then you can commit and just fire it up and get code reviews from it and get those things accommodated. It flags hallucinations, logical errors, code smells, missed unit tests, and more. It is also context aware, and it understands the context behind code changes and complex dependencies. So, it can also give you suggestions if you did something wrong in the application's design or naming or things like that, which is also cool. It is also free, as I said, with some quite generous rate limits that you'll mostly never even encounter. One thing that it heavily relies on is Git branches or workspaces, and many people actually don't use them when vibe coding. But I also want to tell you guys to use them, and this will be a good way to tell you guys about it as well. So, let's get started, and let's test it out to see how well it performs. But before we do that, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-40, Claude 3.7 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.0 Flash, all in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, but what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly, with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. Now, back to the video. Now, you can set it up in anything like VS Code or Cursor or Windsurf or anything that you use, since it's an extension. Just go ahead and get the extension installed. Now, you will be asked to sign in. So, just do that, and it's now configured. That's all you need to do. But, as you can see, it shows nothing here. Well, that's because one of the basic things that it needs in order to make it all work is Git. You obviously need basic Git initialization and stuff, but you would also need to use branches. Also, I'm explaining this because many people who vibe code don't know about it. So, if you know, then bear with me for just a bit. Anyway, branches are basically a separate workspace where you can make changes and try new ideas without affecting the main project. So, for example, if you want to add a feature to your repo, then generally you shouldn't do it directly on the main code, as you won't be able to revert back and stuff like that. And if you are just one team member of a big team working on one thing, and someone else is working on some other feature simultaneously, then your code and their code will overlap, and a bunch of such issues will happen. That's what branches aim to solve. If you're working on a new feature, then you can just get a new branch made, which is like a copy of the same project, and then make the changes in that branch. Then, you can merge the branches into the main 
with a pull request. And Code Rabbit here needs to have that in order to make code reviews, because it can see exactly what changes you have made and allow you to get suggestions based on that. So, this is my Kingbench project, and what I can do here is create a new branch with the git branch command and the branch name. It can be whatever you want, and then a branch will be created. Now, you can get into the branch with the git checkout and the branch name, and it will switch you to that branch. You can also ask your AI coder of choice to do this, but this is also fine. Also, to switch back to the main branch, you can do git checkout main. Anyway, now we are in the secondary branch that we just made. Now, we can make changes, and they will only affect this branch. So, let's say that I change something here, like creating a variable API key and writing a random string in here, just to see if CodeRabbit can give comments on this or not. Now, let's save it, and let's just commit this over with the git add and commit commands. It can also work with unstaged changes, but this is generally a good way to do it. Now, before I show you the code rabbit thing, let me show you the git branch thing. So, as I said, we created and switched to the new branch here. So, this edit that we did is only available in this branch, as I said. So, if we switch back to the main branch, then you can see that this line disappears. And if I switch back to the secondary branch, then it comes back, which is basically what branches do. It's like copy folders. Anyway, now, in Code Rabbit, you can see that we can hit the review option here. And this will make it do the review and will give us the feedback accordingly. You can see the files that we have edited listed here. You can see that it is getting reviewed now, and in just a bit, the code gets reviewed and we get the comments. As you can see, it says that the API key should not be put in a variable, which is great. It also opens up a big tooltip in the view here, which is also good. And you can also see a list of reviews on the extension as well. If you think that the review is correct, then you can also ask the default AI coder based on the editor that you are using to fix this. Like in this case, I'm using VS Code, and if I hit this, then this will just ask Copilot to fix it, which is fine. But you can also just copy this and paste it in the AI coder of your choice to fix this. Like, I use Kilo Code, which gives you $20 of free credits, and it is basically a fork of both Klein and RuCode. It merges the best features from both, and you can use Sonnet and Gemini with it for free and everything. It is also open source. So in this case, I can just ask it to fix this code review and it will just get started on it, which is also awesome. This is pretty awesome and I really liked it because it allows you to write some really good, secure and clean code with it. Because many times, the code that the AI writes or stuff can end up not being as secure and this is more optimized towards that and solves that problem, and is free. So, it only makes sense that you use this. I've been using it, and that's why I thought to talk about this as well. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option, or join the channel as well, and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!